Hey guys, Frank here. Topaz just released Photo AI 3.0. And today I want to show you how I use Photo AI in my workflow. But first, AI. I know a lot of people now go like, oh, this is artificial intelligence. Oh, I don't want this. Guys, it's not Skynet. It's not going to kill you. AI in this case just means it just speeds up your workflow. There's nothing seriously wrong with this stuff. It's not going to creep out of your computer and kill you. It's just going to speed up your workflow. So today, I don't want to show you all the new features. The only thing I want to show you is how do I use it in my workflow? Because let's be honest, all the new features you can see online, but often people ask me like, yeah, I see all the features, but how can I use it in my workflow? What do you do with it? So I'm going to show you four images, and in those four images, I'm going to show you what we do with Photo AI. This is the first image. We shot this on a holiday and as you can see, the noise is horrendously. Normally, well, you would probably throw an image like this out. Now, I know there are a lot of solutions out there that claim to be the best noise killer. And in essence, they all do a fine job and it's, well, it's a little bit like sometimes this one wins, sometimes the other one wins. The thing I like about Photo AI is actually it nails the image almost every time to perfection and it's pretty fast. So let's dive into Photo AI and let's see what it can do with this image. Okay, here we are in Topaz Photo AI. And as you can see, this is the original image. We zoomed in a little bit. <laughs> Look at this. And this is just standard. This is the auto setting. Now, if you want to fine tune this, you just press on raw denoise. And as you can see here, it chews 100%. It's a little bit too strong for my taste. I like it a little bit lower. And there we go. I think this looks a little bit more natural. Now, the nice thing is that in, in this version, it's now also possible to build your own presets. And this actually helps a lot by using your add enhancements. If you press the plus here, you will see that we now have the options for denoise, sharpen, we're going to talk about that later, adjust your lighting, balance your color, preserve text, of course also face recovery, upscale, and the upscaling is really nice. And of course you can remove stuff. Now for today we're just going to focus on the denoise, what you see here and the sharpen, and I'm also going to show you in this file also, of course, the adjust lighting and balance color. So let's adjust the lighting. And yes, this lighting is very, very simple. It's one slider, and it works great, of course, in RAW files, but it also works great in JPEGs. If you want more light, you just push it up. It's super simple, right? And if you want less light, and you just push it down. That's nothing spectacular, but hey, maybe you have a raw file in which you under or overexposed, and this is a great way to, especially for your noise reduction, of course, which is on top, to get much better performance. Now, with most of these settings, you will find over here, you will find controls and selection. Now, when you press the selection, you will find out that you can literally just do this for your whole image, for only your subject, for your background, portrait, landscape, sky, or none. In this case, of course, with lightning, we want to do it on all. You can also change your preview for your mask. What kind of color do you want it? You can choose your brush type, regular or super pixel. And of course, you can change your brush size. And you very easily can change between paint or erase. And this I like a lot. With a lot of software, the masking isn't as nice as in Photoshop. I'm not going to tell you that Photo AI is just as good as Photoshop, but this is much easier than in a lot of other plugins. So for now, let's go back for controls. We're not going to fine tune this a lot. I'm just going to show you what it can do. Just press the X and you're back here. Okay, and of course you can build this up. So for example, balance color, you just drag it in and here, and you have again your selection. And again, with, uh, with color adjustments, I would just go for uh, your full image. And you can very quickly change your color temperature and even the opacity of that color temperature. And that's nice. That's a nice addition, I think. You don't have any U, just temperature, but in most cases, this is more than enough. The real editing you should do in your raw converter, of course. This is, for me, this is where I take out the noise when it's really aggressive and I do a lot of sharpening. The nice thing about the new version is, as you can see here, you can also save this as a preset. And you might wonder like, hey, do I have to be careful in which order I put everything in? No, you don't. You can just pick this up and just drag it there. For whatever reason you have, you can just stack your adjustments the way that you like it. 
And in the end, you can save it as a preset. And then for the next image, you can use that preset. I know a lot of people ask about batch processing. Well, with a preset, you come really close. Okay, so this is one image. Now let's go back and see what we can do with sharpening, because that's, I think, where the real magic is. Now, as you can see, that really cleaned that image up. And of course, you can also use sharpening later, just to your heart's content. And talking about sharpening, you know, one of the things that really struck me the first time I tried Photo IE is actually what it does with images that are out of focus. And let's be honest, even professional photographers sometimes miss focus. Now, in most cases, it isn't a lot. But sometimes you have an image that's just slightly out of focus, but it's a beautiful image. Would you just throw it away or try to fix it? Well, let's dive into Photo AI and let's see what we can do with an image that we intentionally shot totally out of focus. And well, in all honesty, a few years ago, I would not even try to touch this image. Let's see what it can do. Okay, here we have an image of Nadine, and as I told you, we intentionally made this one really bad. This is an image, again, which a few years ago I would have thrown out without even thinking about it. So it's really bad. So let's see what it did on autopilot. So we didn't do anything, I just opened up the image, and this is what Topaz actually did itself. And that's already pretty impressive, right? But it isn't enough. So let's go for Sharpen, open that up. As you can see here, of course, with Sharpen, it selects your subject and not the whole scene. Because with Sharpen, of course, we want to be, well, only on our subject. We want that background to stay out of focus and we don't want to introduce any artifacting. Let's forget the selection for now and let's go for Controls. And you see that it shows standard and almost on 88%. Now, for this image, because it's so messed up, I'm going to go for Strong. And let's do it on 100%. Now, for YouTube and for video purposes, I'm doing this way over the top because I know online you will see the details a lot less than I see them over here on the computer. But I think even on the internet, it's very clearly to see that it went from totally unusable to something that's okay. But now comes the real power. If this is not enough, just go for Add Enhancements and <laughs> choose Sharpen again. And now you can, of course, go for strong and do it again on, for example, let's say, well, let's say 70%. And just add those two together. So now we have two sharpenings on top of each other. And look at this, almost no artifacts. You can see it a little bit in the hair. And this is, of course, where your selection comes in. Because now you just go for your selection and you take your brush and you go for erase. And what you can do is you just take it out of the hair areas. And in this case, the only thing that you sharpen is actually, for example, the glasses and the eyes. Now, I am screen recording at the moment, so that means that my processor takes a huge hit. So it looks a little bit, well, slow at the moment. But on most machines, this will go really nice. And of course, now we can go back to controls. And as you can see here, I took out the artifacts. Now, if you still think there's too much artifacts in the hairs, you can, of course, also use that same mask on the first layer. But for now, just keep it like this. Again, before, totally out of focus. After, at least for internet, this is very usable. And maybe you can even save some images from your family, which are out of focus. And for example, on old negatives or slides. This way, I think it's a great way to save some images. Okay. Let's go back and let's see how we can sharpen for something completely different. Now, as you can see, that's almost a miracle, right? Well, it can save images at least for internet and maybe even for publication if it's slightly out of focus. Remember, this image was really out of focus. Normally, it's not that bad. But talking about the sharpening engine, that's actually the thing that I really love about the Photo AI. So let's dive again into Photo AI with an image we shot with Nadine on the beach. And let's show you what we can do with that sharpening engine. Okay, here we have an image of Nadine at the beach. And as you can see here, the image is great. There's no reason to do any adjustments like noise. There's no reason to do any sharpening. The image just looks great. However, when I look at all the Dells blue on the bottom, looks okay, but what if I want that to pop out? But I don't want to pop it out with just brightness. I just want to make it hyper-realistic. Well, let's start with autopilot. As you can see, because this image isn't 
well, isn't wrong, the autopilot will do something very, very gently. So it will not enhance it a lot, but as you can see in the glasses here, it did change the contrast and it made the image a little bit better in my opinion. It's, yeah, it's, it's better. But let's just remove face recovery for now. And let's just dive into the sharpening. Now, in this case, when I go to selection, I actually want the whole image to be sharpened. So we're going to go for selection. I'm going to go for all. I'm going to go back to controls. Now, for that hyper-realistic look, what I always try to do is I will just go over and I will just look at where are the problem areas in my image. So where do I expect it to start ringing the most? And that's actually in the trees, of course. As you can see here, really sharp, but no ringing yet. So let's try to up the strength. And let's go all the way. Again, for YouTube, we're going to just up the sharpness way more than I would normally do. I'm not going to lie, this takes a while, but look at the difference. And the tree is still acceptable, but look at the Dell's blue. You see that it really starts to pop now. Especially in this area, that's what I really like. But also the clothing of the model. I love to use this on, for example, materials that have a lot of detail like fur or, for example, um, jewelry. It really makes those images pop. And if you still want more detail, you can, of course, run a second layer. So do your Add Adjustments, choose Sharpen again, put it underneath. But in this case, we're going to go for a selection. We're not going to do the subject. I'm only going to do the Dell's blue in the side. So I'm going to do none. I'm going to choose my brush size. And we're just going to paint over the Dell's blue that we want to affect. I'm going to do it pretty rough now. But of course, you can make fine selections, whatever you want. And there we go. Go back for controls. And in this case, let's do it strong on those. And there we go. Now look at the difference. Ah, this is, of course, a little bit too much. So let's tune that down just a little bit. Nice. Of course, you can still move those two around if you want that. I don't see no reason for it here. But sometimes it helps out to just get a little bit less artifacting. That's something you just have to play with and in which order you do it. It will fit in your workflow very quickly. And of course, let's see the difference before and after that second layer. So let's turn that layer off. There you go. And let's turn that first layer off too. Keep looking at the Dell's blue. And let's turn the first layer on. This is the one that we use, of course, mostly for the face and the hairs to make it a little bit less obvious. And then when we dive in, you can do it much stronger and just add those two together. And you can always dive in again and just change those settings or masks or whatever you want to use. It's very flexible. And as you can see here, before and after. Let's put them side to side. You can see it just gives much more pop to your image. And especially here in her clothing, look at the difference. You can see much more of the detail. This looks a little bit blurry. And this image is 100% sharp. But look at the difference. It just looks so much better. It really makes your model pop out without all those annoying artifacts. But we can do more with sharpening. So let's go for the next image. As you can see, you can stack the sharpening. You can do a lot with it. And this is one of the things that I really like about photo. I, you really get that hyper sharpening image and without all the known artifacts. Now, of course, you don't want to overdo it, but one or two layers of sharpening can really enhance an image, especially as you saw in the video when you start using masks. But how about when you shoot animals, for example, pets? Now, we in our studio, we are an all-round studio, so we do products, we do people, we do pets, and of course, everything that comes in front of my camera. 
And one of the things that I love about shooting pets is, of course, the fur and those eyes when they look into the camera. You just melt, right? So let's take a look at Photo AI, what it does with an image from a small Labradoodle. And by the way, this is not Chewy, this is another Labradoodle. Okay, here we have our image of our beautiful Labradoodle. And as you can see here, the fur looks really nice. Again, this image is razor sharp, there's nothing wrong with it. And I just opened up Topaz Photo AI. I didn't do anything, this is just the autopilot setting. And look at the difference. And I hope you can see it on the video. But this, especially on a print, a print is always a little bit softer than what you see on your screen. On a print, this will really make the dog jump out like crazy. Your owner will absolutely love those images. Now look at the nose, for example. So much more detail. It really makes the dog come alive. And it shows sharpening on the subject. And let's go for controls. Again, this is the autopilot. Sharpening on 44% strong. It looks pretty good. And for the video, let's overdo it a little bit. This is way too much. I would never use this. But as you can see, also the artifacts, there isn't a lot of ringing here. A little bit on the nose, a little bit here. But again, this is way over the top. I would normally just leave it somewhere at 50. And there you go. This is much more natural. Very, very nice. Now, if you don't like it in the eyes, again, go for your selection and just take that out with your eraser tool. In my case, I would leave it in, but maybe just underneath the eyes. Let's just make that a little bit smaller. I think that part just jumped out a little bit too much. As you can see here, this looks much better. Cool. As you can see, even with the standard settings of Photo AI, it immediately popped into focus and gave you that nice hyper-focus look. And, well, in all honesty, that's what I use Photo AI for the most. Getting that razor sharp look. This looks amazing on fur, on diamonds, on jewelry in general, but also on clothing. You can really see all the fibers from the wool or from any fabric that you use. So, concluding. Photo AI 3.0. You have a lot more options. Of course, you can still blow up your image. And of course, with blow up, we mean resize your image to an insane resolution. You also have still that face recovery. But now you can also use that raw conversion, a little bit of brightness in your shot. Because, well, when you're working with raw files and you do noise correction, you, of course, also need to lighten up your images if you don't use a light meter. You should always use a light meter, right? And then you don't need that. But that's for another video. And one of the things that I like about the new version is that you can now work in blocks. So you are not forced into a workflow that's already there where you can disengage stuff or engage stuff. You can now stack effects, you can move the effects in your workflow. And of course, the most important thing, you can also show and of course save your presets. And that's a big one. So if you want to incorporate Photo AI into your workflow, you can use it as a standalone, you can use it as a plugin in Lightroom or Photoshop. And I'm pretty sure that when you are shooting a lot of images and sometimes you miss a shot, Photo AI is really a nice addition to your workflow. Thank you so very much for watching, guys, and see you again for the next time. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. We always try to answer them as soon as possible, and of course, personally. Thank you so very much, and see you for the next one. Bye, guys.